Welcome to Purpose by Design with Dr. Pamela Hinkle, a platform for people to share their stories, a place where change and healing can begin. Dr. Pamela stands on the fact that we are here on purpose, with a purpose, by design, and not by default. This week, Dr. Pamela welcomes Psalmist Kathy Cheetah to Purpose by Design. Purpose by Design starts now. You're the God who never leaves, the one who's holding me. When the feelings are too much, you said your healing touch. When others run away, you always stay. You're my ever giving, never failing. Your voice is so impactive. Well, welcome everyone. I am Dr. Pamela and welcome back to Purpose by Design. You have a purpose by design, not by default. And as you heard and saw before in this clip, I have the privilege of having somebody that I would say is a psalmist with us today. And um, her name is Kathy Cheetah, and I have been privileged to know her through Living Word Christian Center, which is my church, and it's her church. And she is a phenomenal worship leader. She leads our worship for morning prayer. I've become very familiar with how she flows during morning prayer because I serve as a team lead and host online. So I see her there, and I'm like, hey, so... They're all amazing, but I am cheering for Kathy today. I've also had the privilege of sitting under her worship in the main services, and she plays the the piano like and keyboards like nobody's business and has an incredible story. So I am so excited to introduce you, Miss Kathy. Will you just take the liberty of telling everybody a little bit about who you are? Tell us. Who are you? Well, thank you, first of all, for having me. And I am a singer. I'm a songwriter. I'm a worship leader. Um, I love playing the keyboards at church. I do lots of things. My favorite, I think, title, if you want to use that, is Daughter of God. So that is the first and the thing I have to remind myself of the most. But it's where I try to find my identity and where everything else really stems from. So I have been at Living Word 13 years now and absolutely love it. It's an amazing church. We, I'm very blessed to be there and be part of the worship team. I have been involved in church music since I was yay high to a grasshopper, as they say. So like, I've always sung and always played. Uh, back in the day, it was hymns. Now it's modern worship music. And I actually write worship music with people. I write and released one that you just played and i have done a lot of little you know little things along the way i actually wrote a children's book a couple years ago yeah i blogged for a little while so i've kind of done a little bit of lots of things as a music teacher so now god has me on this journey to write and do and sing and worship him in lots of different creative musical ways um, he's also teaching me, though, that worship is more than just music. Worship is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that should come out through your music. And it's just it's been a it's been a really great journey. So, yeah, I'm really glad to be here. I love that. Worship is a lifestyle. Now, just a little segue. Um, we're so glad that you're here. But I want to I want to capitalize on that statement you just made. Worship is a lifestyle. Being that you've been doing music and worship since you were little, little, and you kind of transitioned from hymns to this, to that, to the modern music, and now you have God speaking to you about worship as a lifestyle, as which I'm sure it always has been for you, just qualifying that, y'all. But as a woman leader, daughter of destiny, daughter of the king, and worship and music being your heartbeat. Was there a time where you had that aha epiphany moment that it was like, worship is more than music? Because you said God had been speaking to you about that. How did that kind of like 
you know, if you could like pull the curtains back for us just for a moment, can you camp on that statement? Because that is so true and so powerful. And coming from you with your lifetime of achievements within music, that's a powerful thing for you to say. Yeah. So I'm part of a couple different songwriting communities. One is all actually about writing worship songs. And it's something we actually have started talking about about how worship is more than what we just sing on Sunday morning. And so I just started meditating on that. And in this songwriting community, we, they believe in singing the Psalms. And so reading through the Psalms and realizing that David wrote those from a real place with the Lord, right? He wrote them out of his life. He didn't write them because he wanted to write a song. And how you look at David's life, and even when he sinned, he realized how that hurt God. And so his lifestyle choice then was an act of worship to repent. So mm -hmm. repentance is even an act of worship because you're you're recognizing God as the author and creator and the king and the savior and lord and everything that he is, right? So it's all of the little things. And if you look at worship, and so I started studying it in the Bible and worship in the Bible is talked about with music, but not exclusively. A lot of times it's talked about being set apart. You know, you look at, especially in the Old Testament with the Levites, their whole lifestyle was worship, but only a small portion of that was music. It was really about how they lived their life, the choices they made. Um, they were expected to almost be at a different level than everybody else, you know, as far as their purity and their cleanliness and all of that before God. Now, thankfully we have grace and we don't have to follow all of those things. So hallelujah for that. At the same time, God is still holy. And because he is always holy, everything I can do or say should come from that same place of reminding myself that he is holy. You know, so even if it's, you know, doing my best to love my husband by doing the dishes, right? That can still be an act of worship if I remind myself and do it from a place of I do this because I love him and therefore I'm honoring God because of how I'm choosing to act towards one of his children. So it's it's more of a mindset switch than it really is anything else. And so when that happens, when you realize that everything you do, everything you say can be an act of worship, the songs kind of shift meaning. And in some ways they just become an extension of what you're already doing every day. So that way, when you come to church on Sunday morning, you're not just singing random words on a screen you're realizing this is coming from a place of, oh yeah, I, I want to do this all day. I don't want to just come for two hours on a Sunday morning and do this. I want Jesus to be Lord all the time, not just when I sing my songs. And because, you know, so like even in a church service, the offering, the tithes, all of that is a gift. It's all a, a, a way to worship him, to show who he is and who I am not. Yes. You know, and that mindset switch has actually it's really helped me in not just my life but in writing music you know because then you find yourself you know when i'm writing with other people i find myself writing more from a place of being able to include the real life and it's not just about moments in church which sometimes can feel very cut off from the reality of your life it helps weave everything together. When you realize that worship is a whole all day, every day interconnected thing, you know, and if you look at the different worship for, uh, uh, terms in Hebrew, they all mean very different things. And it just tells me that God doesn't see worship as just singing. He sees the heart. And so therefore it doesn't matter if you're singing, if you're singing well, or if you're singing awful, if you're doing the dishes, if you're being nice to your neighbor who may or may not be nice to you, you know, all those little things can be an act of worship if we remember why we are doing them and who we are doing them for. 
Wow. If we remember why we're doing it and who we're doing it for. Boom. That's a drop the mic moment right there. Drop the mic. Walk away. That is so powerful. Okay. A couple of things that you said. I just want to reiterate them. So uh, you, uh, you said that when David was writing his music, he wasn't doing it because he wanted to write another song. He wasn't looking for another number one on the Christian top, you know, 10, right? Or number one Christian artist. He was writing out of his life. Oh my gosh, that is so powerful. And even writing out of his shortcomings, his sin, his mistakes, whatever you want to tag them there. He was writing out of that. So it wasn't just about having another song. There was another level of depth that really stood out to me. And then you talked about, you know, uh, repentance is an act of worship. Oh my gosh, do people need to hear that? Because the enemy keeps people bound up mm -hmm. from repenting or make it this private little, you don't want to it, right? And uh, whereas really, if they understand that it's, there's freedom there in worship, and what a great example you gave us of King David. Wow, that was so powerful. Every, and then I wrote down everyday things can become an act. Of, this is why you, you called it a lifestyle, right? Everyday things. And I love the example of the neighbor, the dishes, your spouse. And then you said mind, mindset switch. I'm big on mindset. I talk a lot about mindset because the, the mindset is what is what ends up driving us into um, the, the choices that we make. You know, we choose uh, what we believe and what we believe we behave and what we behave, we act out. So here you're talking, it's a, mind, a mindset switch. You said that um, everything can be an act of worship. Mm -hmm. And it's from that place that you now step into worship as music now coming into the whole aspect of leading people in worship leading people in prayer with worship mm -hmm. through this so i i'm so glad we camped on this because this is important for people to hear this i'm getting blessed by it like just repentance is worship so whatever you're going through right now out there to the listeners or those watching on youtube there's no there's no sin that god doesn't forgive there's nothing so big that it needs to put distance between you and him. Mm -hmm. It is one prayer away. And I'll just say it's one ask away. It's one worship away. So instead mm -hmm. of feeling ashamed, because that's what the enemy wants you to feel like, what Kathy just expounded on is actually that it is a place of worship when we will come to God and bear our souls and um, in a place of repentance. So if that's you, Right now, just hit the pause button because we'll be here when you're done repenting. And repentance is not a scary word. It means to just come before God and just be transparent to say, hey, this is where I, me I messed up or I missed it or I made a mistake. And that you ask him to, to help you and to cleanse you. Cleanse you doesn't mean make you perfect, but help you to not be ashamed anymore. Help you to not be in fear anymore. And understanding that that is a place of worship is going to close that gap between you and heaven, you and God. So that is so powerful. So hit that pause button, do that repentance and come back and join us and let us know that you did it so we can rejoice with you. Um, so going on with the uh, with your questions that I have for you, which please feel free to flow on those in any way, shape or form, you know, but I love hearing people's backstories because they're always amazing how God's navigated. And then here you are today and here I am today with you. So could you just take us on a little trip of your life and tell us your backstory? So I grew up in a very typical Midwestern Baptist family. You know, we went to church every time the door was open. You know, I did a lot of classical music growing up. Um, I went to a little Baptist school and we did Sandy Patty and Steve Green and all the things, you know, in our little choir, right? I also grew up singing with my dad and my sisters, um, which very treasured moments because my dad's in heaven now. So um, 
so music has always been a big part of my life and church music especially um somewhere along the way um i became friends with a girl in my high school who was spiritual and charismatic and she and her parents helped me see that there was more even than what i had so just even starting to be around somebody who was charismatic and spirit filled took me into a different place and they were open to questions there's nothing wrong with asking questions provided you ask them to the right people you know and god god loves questions you know i mean how many times did you know people in the old testament and or even the disciples ask jesus questions all the time right so god is not scared of your questions i'm just going to put that in there for somebody because it's like God is not scared of your questions. He knows them anyway. So you might as well just verbalize them and ask. So, um, so they were, they would take me on this journey of like explaining some different things in first Corinthians and what this stuff meant. And I went through a really hard time. I was married before and we got divorced and the church I was at at the time in Albuquerque, the pastor was really kind and gentle and they were very supportive. They were also believed in the gifts of the spirit. And so God was bringing me after I took my detour, you know, cause I think we all have a detour, right? At some point, you know, he, I had this detour and he used that divorce and my church in Albuquerque to really bring me back to him. So when I moved back here to Minnesota, I, um, my parents actually don't go to living word but they knew it was a very similar church to the one i had in albuquerque so and i knew from the moment i was there in the first service it was actually a wednesday service that this was my church wow. and i didn't know you know at the time pastor mac doesn't usually preach on wednesday so it was somebody else i went out and talked to somebody and this this is why kindness is such a big deal i was very broken i was recently divorced newly single mom right i walk out and the greeter that they used to have a visitor section so i walked over and talked to her and she's like oh we were talking hey you're a singer you're a musician whatever music teacher and she's like, hey, our church Christmas show is that weekend. So I, she, she actually came that weekend, sat with me, walked me through the church to find where to take my kid and all the things. This is why kindness is such a big deal because it helps solidify that this was my church. Like I knew that, but that solidified that. Yes. I didn't expect going to that Christmas show to ever really be on the stage, <laughs> let alone playing with the people I was watching. That is a whole God thing in and of itself. God did a lot of healing, though, in those several years. I want to back up a little bit because there's an important part to this whole puzzle. I was diagnosed with clinical depression back in college. I went on medication, the whole deal. There's nothing wrong with medication if you need it, and that's where your faith is. Please use it. Don't go off of it without a doctor. So my church in Albuquerque, they believe in healing, just like living word, just like a lot of churches. Okay? They had a healing service. The lady that prayed for me was actually the licensed church counselor. And I knew I was healed. I knew I was healed of depression. But she looked at me and she said, now make sure you go out of your medicine the right way. So go to the doctor and do it the right way. Don't just stop things. Right? So I went through that. That was February of 2010. June of 2010, my now ex-husband asked for a divorce. The depression never came back. Grief happened because when big things happen, grief happens. Depression never came back. I had people try to speak it back into my life and it never came back. So healing is possible, not just physically, but even in your soul, even in the rewiring of your brain, because depression it can also be a wiring in your brain. God knows how to fix all of that stuff. Yes. He healed me. And that's been over 13 years now that I've been completely healed. And so when people ask me, well, how can you smile so much when you, when you're singing, how, how can I not? I walked in a dark cloud for over a decade. I know what that feels like. No, thank you. I don't want to do that again. Right now that does not mean I haven't been through things very, very hard. A couple of years ago, we went through, I think, all the things at once. It was just, it was like the enemy was just stockpiling everything and just every weapon he could. 
you know, and recently even I have a prodigal. A lot of people have prodigals. Yes. I have a prodigal. Okay. That's a hard journey, right? Some of the stuff I'm writing and some of the stuff I'm encouraging people with is because I'm living it and I needed it. And one of my songwriting mentors says, I'm a mentor because I needed one and nobody was one for me. And so I'm just trying to give people what I didn't have. And so I'm just going to put a little side note in here for prodigals, parents of prodigals. God understands because God is a parent of prodigals. Adam and Eve were the first prodigals. Okay. I have a Bible teacher that I follow and he's talked about this. Adam and Eve were the first prodigals. God knows exactly how you feel. He did not blame himself. He did not blame himself. He gave them the perfect everything and they still walked away. Okay. Recognize your part in whatever happened, but don't own their stuff. It's not yours to own, right? So whoever this is for, and normally I don't share this kind of stuff. So obviously this is for somebody. You need to realize that the choice your child is making has nothing to do with you and everything to do with God. There's everything to do with God. Okay. They see you as a vessel of God, which is why they're rejecting you. Doesn't make it easy at all. (laughs) It does take the pressure off of you to then fix it. Because if it's not my fault, I can't fix it. Right. And there's a freedom in that. Right. Mm -hmm. So just know that whatever you're, the enemy is trying to tell you, or he could be using other people, well-intended people in your life, to tell you, you should have done something differently. You should have said this. You should not have done blah, whatever it is, right? God is bigger than all of your choices, good and bad. That's what Romans 8, 28 is all about, right? He can take the bad and turn it into good. Even the bad you did intentionally, even the way you may have intentionally or not intentionally hurt your kid, he can still turn that around, right? And some of the most amazing testimonies that we have are people who were prodigals. I mean, Moses ran away in the desert for 40 years, right? Okay, I think that's a prodigal, right? He murdered somebody, right? So did King David, right? Um, So there's a lot of examples in the Bible, but even just people that you look up to, maybe that are in the public eye, Franklin Graham, for example, was a prodigal, okay? Mm -hmm. When you have Billy Graham as a dad, people expect a lot of you, okay? So just take the pressure off of yourself. And it's just something I'm reminding myself of and something I keep learning, you know, and and you learn in a deeper way when when you learn something, you know, again, you learn it on a deeper level and it takes a deeper root in your life. I can't own what somebody else does. I can repent for my stuff. They have to repent for their stuff, right? Right. It's just as much worship, though, for me to say, God, I trust them. I trust you with my child, whether they're following you or not. That is just as much an act of worship as raising my hands on Sunday morning. So that whole perspective has come because I've lived through really hard things, you know, a divorce, a prodigal, all sorts of other stuff I won't even go into. You have to realize at some point, God is bigger than all of that. He's bigger than all of that, right? He also never promised me an easy life. Never, ever. In the book of John, he talks about that. In this world, you will have trouble. That's just as much of a promise as, and I will be with you (laughs) through all of it, right? So I just, he keeps showing me this over and over and over again. I am here. I am with you. I haven't left, no matter even if everybody else leaves, I haven't left, right? So if you're dealing with rejection, which obviously a divorce and prodigal kid, you're going to deal with rejection, God will never reject you. So the opening clip that we heard, that's where this song comes from, the God who never leaves, okay? My prodigal made some choices and I had to process them and I started reading and there's a verse in Psalms that talks about how he is the ever-present help. And I just kind of camped on that for a while. And God just kept taking me to that. And the fact that I, you know, he's like, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You know, he he says never. He doesn't say, if you follow all the rules, 
if you do all the right things, if your kid turns out the right way, if you do all of the check all the boxes, whatever thing, right? No, he says, I will never leave you, period, stop, end, right? That's where that song came from. From a place of brokenness and a place of rejection in my own personal life, knowing that God never leaves me mm. and he cares about how I feel. Yes. Read the Psalms over and over. There's a lot of happy Psalms. There's a lot of not happy ones, right? David and the other psalmists are crying out for all sorts of reasons, right? You know, I don't like what's going on here. God, I'm sad. God, I'm depressed. God, I'm feeling rejected. This person betrayed me, whatever it is, right? Over and over. And God married those two things, the verse in Hebrews and this verse in Psalms, to produce that song, really, you know, to help people realize you can talk to God about your feelings. You can tell him, I don't have words. God's like, right, but I can read your tears. It's okay. Oh you know? Yeah. And he's like, in fact, I collect them. Like they're not wasted. Like I actually treasure them. Right. And you know, even if you feel like you're going through the fire. Oh, yep. That's right. I'm there too. Right. No matter what you go through, no matter what feeling you have, God's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Right. You may feel he left. That doesn't change the truth that he did not. Come on. Right. He promised he will never leave. If I feel he left, I need to figure out where I stepped back. He didn't step back. I did. You know, and he's so gentle and he's so good to just draw you back in. Now, for me, that happens a lot through music, right? Whether it's songs everybody ends up hearing or whether it's just I sit down at my piano over here and I sing whatever I'm dealing with. You know, whatever prayer, whatever worship I have, whether it's I sit and cry while I play, whatever it is, right? This is how I process. Everybody processes differently. You have to find your thing. In those moments of raw honesty with God, he will meet you. I can, he's done it for me over and over and over again, right? In my private time, when I'm in front of people, everything in between. He's not going anywhere, right? So just know that whatever happens in your life, no matter who rejects you, and family rejection is one of the hardest to deal with. That's true. God is a father who never leaves. Never. Even if your dad did, he won't. He won't. He's too good. He's too good for that, right? He's too loving. He's too gentle. He's too kind. He's so, like, I can't even fathom how good he is. Right. And how loving he is. So just know that you can share your big, raw, crazy emotions that nobody else wants to hear. You can share them with God. And if you don't believe me, go read the Psalms from one to one fifteen. We'll find every gamut of every emotion you can imagine, including revenge, including the desire for that. All of it. It's all there. And I think God put them in the Bible to show us we can be real with him. We can be honest. Now, that doesn't mean go share all your stuff with everybody. David was very, David and the Psalms were very careful, right? They didn't write these to have a song to sing. That wasn't even their intention. They wrote them out of a personal place, okay? We just happened to sing them thousands of years later. God did that. Right. So know that God can handle your emotions and he won't leave you. Wow. Uh, just wow. There's so much that you gave us there. I love this. You said, um, talk to God about your feelings. How many people don't do that? Mm -hmm. Or they try to faith it till they make it right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, talk to God about your feelings. The thing is, he's not going to leave you in the muck. He, when you talk about it, you purge it, and God can bring you through it. And then you said, um, moments of raw honesty with God. Like that is just boom. And, and to me, that speaks so loudly because it's already all explained to God. He, 
he is not like, yeah, thank you for being so honest with me, Kathy. He already knows. But when we have those moments of raw honesty, what that does for us is that's the secret sauce, right? And and then from that place, we can begin to, to flow into another level of worship. But really, these talking to God about your feelings, being honest, that's all, as you're telling us today, that's all part of worship. Yes. Yeah, it very much is. And it takes, sometimes you're supposed to share those moments with people. Okay. So like when I wrote this song, The God Who Never Leaves, I wasn't planning on sharing it with anybody. I wrote it because I needed it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I needed. I went back to my worship community, my songwriting community, and I felt like I needed to play it for them, at least just to get some feedback on it. You know, it's like one of those practical sort of things. It's like when you write a book and you could send it to your editor and they give you stuff, right, to change. Okay, It's the same kind of thing. I remember playing it and the, the guy in charge, the mentor comes on and he goes, okay, first of all, you have to release this. And I was like, okay, that was not the plan. <laughs> like I was not planning on sticking it out there for the world. He's like, no, you have to. People need this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes God will take your raw moments and when you share it with the people you know you're supposed to share it with, sometimes he'll breathe on that and kind of push you almost because he knows you probably wouldn't do it yourself, but he'll just kind of nudge you a little bit like, see, see, you're going in the right direction. So please do that, right? So know that your moments of being real with God actually help other people. Um, you know, I mean, I think it, I think it's Galatians that talks about how we we're supposed to carry each other's burdens. Well, the people that can help carry my burdens the best are the ones who've been there. Right. right? Parents of prodigals, you know, people who've been divorced, all that kind of stuff. Like they get it in a way that other people don't. Right. There's another verse. One of the epistles talks about how we go through things so that God can comfort us so that we can then comfort other people. It's the same thing, right? So okay. yes, be real, be honest with God. And just be aware though, that sometimes he will take those moments to help other people. Now, you might not be like me. You might not stick it all over Spotify and all over the internet and all over the world, like for anybody to listen to. It could just be for that person in pew number three who you're supposed to go talk to because mm -hmm. they just went through a thing, you know? So realize though that sometimes the Holy Spirit will nudge you to do that mm -hmm. because they need what you just walked through because you're just ahead of where they are. And that helps all of us, right? When I see someone further ahead than me, I can go, oh, I, that means I can get there. I can get to that point, right? Yeah. It's the same thing, but then you can do that for somebody else. Right. Yeah. Right. And I love how you break that down because it might not necessarily mean your song is all over. Like you said, Spotify or SoundCloud or whatever. Yeah. It could be that you have that word in due season for whoever it is in that sitting two seats down from you. Yeah. And again, that comes back to it being all an act of worship mm -hmm. and how you said, you know, you, you created this song, which was amazing. And it was coming out of your own heart and experience and you weren't planning on it going anywhere, but God did. And he said, he, this is the song is going to help so many that is. And it came out of, like you talked about David, it came out of that difficult place. It came out of that hard place. And so many times you hear songs about that, like with the old hymns. So this song was written when they were going through A, B, and C. This song was written when they were dealing with this. And it's like, we sing these songs and they're so powerful, but it's exactly what you're talking about, that they were going through a challenge in life and allowed the Spirit of God to minister to them through the music and then ultimately to the world through the song. Yeah. It's just, it's like a, it's a double win, <laughs> win, win. And that comes back to your statement that you said at the beginning of worship being a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. Well, we're going to take another moment to listen to another song. And um, I picked this one 
because you sang it for Pastor Mac and uh, the senior pastor, him and him and uh, Pastor Lynn at Living Word Christian Center. And you sang it for him. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to bring it back up and play it again and then have you tell us about this song and what it means to you and what it meant to be able to sing that. By faith I claim this mountain, he has promised me. By faith I see the vision, surpassing all my dreams. He's proved it over and over again, throughout his living word. I can't take this mountain, knowing he will give me more. Like that was so powerful. So I was brought up where, you know, I, your senior pastor is just, you know, like the respect, the honor, mm -hmm. you know, and that they're kind of like an offshoot of that spiritual dad. Right. And so whenever you can get a chance to show them love and honor and respect, it's just, to me, that's always a treasure. And I remember thinking about you and what a privilege that must have been for you to have that opportunity to to give that love back and to share from your heart. But now hearing all that you're talking about with regards to worship and not just being song, not just being training, not just being music. I see a whole other depth now to you in a deeper level. I mean, I, I, everybody, I knew it was there. I could feel it just being in the presence with her. But hearing you share. Um, has taken it so much deeper for me. So expound on what this was like. How did you end up singing this song? How did you pick this song? And what was it like to sing for your pastor? Okay, so I um, I have a friend who actually played some of the songs that I've written for Pastor Lynn. Okay, she didn't know that I wrote songs. So she heard some of my music and she called me and she was like, hey, could you write a song for his birthday? I was like, sure. And she gave me all of her scriptures that she used about Caleb and the mountain and, you know, all of that stuff. And um, I reached out to my friend Bev at church and sent her kind of, you know, and she gave me some ideas to start with. Mm -hmm. And then I took what she gave me and the Holy Spirit literally formed it into a song. I had the whole thing start to finish about four and a half hours which that sometimes happens and sometimes does not. Sometimes it, it, it's a process and sometimes he drops things on you. That one was a little more of a download than it was. <laughs> um, and I remember, you know, just sitting over here, I actually wrote it over here at this piano and working through the scriptures and making sure to use the scriptures and to make sure it's biblical the way Pastor Lynn was seeing it. Right. And at the same time, being almost in shock and awe of the fact that how did I get chosen to do this? <laughs> like, how did this even happen? Right. So like kind of going back and forth in this, you know, several hours sitting over here at this piano and processing all of that. And I wasn't sure if they were just going to play it or if I was going to sing it initially. And so when I was speaking to her and her assistant, they're like, oh, no, you're going to sing it in the service. And I was like, OK, <laughs> I guess we're going to do that. So I was not really sure how he was going to feel about it. Right. Because I, I love our pastor very much. He's not an emotional person. Right. And he's not he's not very expressive that way. He's not a what we would label as creative. Right. Mm. So I just wasn't sure. I knew he would feel honored, but beyond that, I wasn't certain. The look on his face when I got to the chorus, I about lost it. I about started crying. I was not expecting it to move him. I talked to him afterwards and he hugged me, which was the first time I think I've ever hugged Pastor Mac, right? And he was very, he said it ministered to him. Wow. That meant so much to me. I didn't really care at that point what the rest of the congregation thought. That was what, that was the biggest compliment to me to be able to minister to your own pastor. I never thought I would get that gift. It's really a gift. Yes. At the same time, I was a little surprised by how many people, because I wrote it very specifically about him. Like if you, 
if you read the lyrics of the song, right, it's very much about his life and what he teaches, what he preaches and where he's at and the mission he's on now and all that stuff, right? I was a little surprised at how many people in the church were so moved by it. Because I'm like, this is for him. Like, I'm like, okay, obviously you all love your pastor too, right? So that was a that was a blessing on top of everything else. You know, and I just I remember then, you know, he's like, Hey, I want a copy of it. So we made sure to get him the live stuff from, you know, the the church service and all of that. And to at one point, I remember like sitting there, singing the song, looking at him and Pastor Lynn in the front row, because I'm literally right in their eye, line of sight, reminding mm -hmm. myself, 13 years ago, I was in the back, like three rows from the back. Nobody knew who I was. Nobody, I had no idea that God was going to take me this far. And of course, he still has further to go. And I don't know where that is. He does. I think sometimes he doesn't show us because it would terrify us. So <laughs> I think there's a reason it says he's a light unto my path, like my immediate step right here. He's a lamp to my feet, not five miles down the road, <laughs> right? Because I think that five or 10 or 20 miles would have scared me. Like if I would have known 13 years ago that I would have been sitting on, a, on the stage at my church, singing a song mm -hmm. that I helped write, for my senior pastor, I think I probably would have walked out the door and not come back. I was too broken. I was too far from that, right? God in his mercy and grace gently brought me there. You know, it reminded me that the journey is important. We all want in this weird culture that we live in, we want instant everything, right? We want microwave Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. However, microwave Christianity doesn't it doesn't plant roots, especially not deep ones that are going to survive the hurricane. Not even close, right? And I just remember the first time singing it live. I remember, well, I, I sang it live actually in rehearsal and having Pastor Keeve and some of the other band people that I'd looked up to for so long, right? Standing there listening, seeing that they were clearly touched by it. That was such an amazing thing. And then to hear how Pastor Mac felt about it. And so you, you never know where God is going to bring you so true. or what, how he's going to maneuver things. <laughs> you know, I had no idea that this was even coming, you know, but he did. And so I remember sitting at my desk right here and going, okay, God, I, my whole schedule was so packed that week. I was like, okay, God, I have this one afternoon to do this. I need you to come through. You have to help me write this song. Pastor Lynn is counting on you. And I know she prays and I know she has talked to you about this. So you need to come through for her, right? And I remember sending it to her and how she loved it. And that was amazing to me, right? And it just, it just kept going. And it's a song that, it's a good reminder to all of us, you know, to go take this mountain, you know, Caleb was 80 or 80 something years old when he conquered that mountain. Now the lyric in the song, go take this mountain. He will give me more. If you read the story, we all stop at Caleb in the mountain. We forget God gave him Hebron as well. God gave him more than the mountain, right? So when God gives you this mountain, when you take the mountain, God gives you, there's more than that. There's more blessing after that, right? Yes. And I think that's part of what people connected with, right? That whatever that mountain is that you need to go take, God has blessing beyond that. Caleb wasn't planning on getting Hebron and all that other stuff, right? He just wanted the mountain he was promised, right? And we would all be just gloriously grateful just to get whatever God promised us. However, he overdoes himself every single time. He's super abundant, right? Yeah. So when he gives you, it's like, okay, yeah, go take this mountain, stand on, stand on it, fight for it, whatever you got to do. Just know that I'm going to do more than that. It's Ephesians 3.20, right? Yeah. It's what it is. So it was an amazing experience, one I never saw coming. God's really good at surprising people. 
you know, with like little things in your or big things like that in your life you never saw coming. And you look back on your life and you go, okay, I can, I think I can see the journey to how you got me here. I would not have picked this journey to get me here. <laughs> but okay, right? <laughs> You know, so yeah, it was just, it was a, it was a wonderful weekend for me. And the biggest thing though, was that how much it blessed him. And that's really what matters out of all of this. So is that I was able to minister to my, my own pastor and I never thought I would get to do that. And it's important to find a way to bless your pastor, by the way, just a little side note. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I love that it came to you out of nowhere. Because that just, again, shows the creativity of God and that even if you don't think he's working behind the scenes in your life, he is. <laughs> he is. And that when we are obedient, as this song talks about, to take that mountain, that there's more beyond the mountain. And like you were obedient, Kathy, to write out of your heart and, and to and to choose worship as a lifestyle and to join these different um, groups that you've talked about and to be faithful in your writing, to be faithful in your worship experience, to be able to, to teach just like you're doing here. You took your mountain girl. And, and then there's the beyond, like the mountain isn't the final place. Like you said, like, don't put up the flag and put up camp because there's another mountain. There's more beyond that. And here, He's working behind the scenes through your obedience, mm -hmm. through your um, growing, because you've talked about how you were growing. And so as we're just going through life, doing the best we know how to do, navigating the terrain the best we know how to do, not trying to be perfect, not trying to be better than, not trying to, you know, any of that. We're just navigating through the terrain of life, doing our best to serve our king and use our gifts for his glory. He is behind the scenes working yeah. in amazing ways. And I loved how you said, 13 years ago, I was sitting in the back row. And here I am on the front, not even the front row, on the stage, turning around. Those are my feet on the stage. Look down. Those are my feet, right? And, and you're there and you're singing to the front row and beyond and highlighting the man of God who's been the under shepherd of your soul for 13 years and it was by request mm -hmm. that you were brought to a moment for such a time as this that just shows how awesome god is and how he wants to utilize his children but also i want to just circle back to your faithfulness that doesn't mean perfection mm -hmm. none of us are perfect it doesn't mean we're without mistakes it means that you know, we just, we, we have the keep on keeping on spirit, right? We just mm -hmm. keep on doing what we know to do and being teachable. So that is so cool. I didn't know that whole backstory of that song. I figured there was a pretty amazing one yeah. in there, but that must have been a shocker to all of a sudden get this phone call from Pastor Lynn. You're like, hello, hello, Kathy, <laughs> Pastor Lynn, I right because we all love her and respect her look up to her so much will you write a song for Mac's birthday are you serious <laughs> <laughs> yes i'll do that yeah, 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 right? yeah. <laughs> holy ghost take over oh my gosh that is such a cool story um anything else you want to share on that before we move on to your third song that you have for us today no i think that that about covered it so Amazing. Okay, so um, you have another song, yeah. and I'm so excited about this song. And do you want to prep it at all before we play it? Well, it's called The Greatest Wonder of Christmas, and it's out wherever you want to go listen. And yeah, I think you'll understand who The Greatest Wonder is once you start listening. I wonder if we're missing the greatest wonder of A precious little baby sent to die to make us free. I don't want to miss the greatest wonder of Christmas. 
what an amazing song. And I want you to tell us the backstory on that song, but I also want you to tell everybody, like you, you touched on it, like wherever music is played, but give some information. How do people find you? Where do they go? And it's all in the description, folks. So you don't have to be trying to memorize it or scribble it on your hand. It's all in the description. So take it away. Tell us about the song, the backstory, and then close us up with how do people follow you? And then I have one more question for you at the end. Sure. So the greatest wonder of Christmas, um, I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite times of year. We put our tree up ridiculously early. It just makes me happy. Um, and we leave it up really long because January here in Minnesota is cold and 40 below. So I leave it up just to make me smile. <laughs> and as much as I love all of the things about Christmas, you know, little kids singing in church, sometimes way off key, you know, to grandpa reading, you know, listening, hearing his story for the umpteenth time, baking the cookies and all of the traditional stuff. We can get so caught up with that, that we lose what Christmas is really about. Mm -hmm. So I was processing this and this question came to me is like, I wonder if we're missing the greatest wonder of them all. And that's how the chorus starts, right? So, yeah. and I, so I took, I wrote a first verse and I took, I had a chorus and I took it to a couple friends of mine, Danita and Terry, and they helped me finish writing the song. We rewrote the first verse so it was stronger. And the whole thing, it, it, it's got these happy moments about all these different, all these different fabulous things about Christmas that we all love, right? At the same time, the best part of it is Jesus, the absolute best part. And if all of that other stuff disappeared, I should be okay with having Christmas just because it's his birthday. Hmm. It's the birthday of the saving King. Yes. That is enough of a reason to celebrate whether or not you have your Christmas tree or you're surrounded by all the people or whatever. And sometimes Christmases are hard, right? You can still celebrate the fact that it's his birthday. Even if yours doesn't look the way you want it to, right? it's still his birthday, right? And to the point, I remember when my daughter was little, she came home from church one day and she's like, mommy, we made a birthday cake for Jesus in Sunday school. And I was like, oh, <laughs> she's like, we sang him happy birthday. I didn't know it was his birthday. <laughs> like, she's like six, five, six, somewhere in there, right? The innocence of little children. So for a long time after that, we made a birthday cake for Jesus, just to remind ourselves what this day is really all about, right? And so that's where that whole song came from. It's just, it's just a moment to help everybody stop and remember and the hustle and bustle of all of the things and the shopping and crazy lines everywhere and frustrated people and whatever else you're dealing with. It's still Jesus's birthday. Whether or not that's his actual birthday, it doesn't matter we're still choosing to celebrate his birthday and his birthday changed everything. It changed everything, right? Yes. Because he was born. We're not under the law anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that. Right. <laughs> I don't have to try to keep all 600, whatever it is, rules and laws. I don't have to do that anymore. Okay. He did all of that because he was born, right? That, that should stop and make you wonder. That should bring your wonder back in Christmas. If you've gotten frustrated by all of the things and all the commercial stuff, I think, you know, I've watched the Charlie Brown Christmas special, I don't know how many times, and they have it right, right? It's like, this is about Jesus's birthday. It's not bought in a store, to quote Dr. Seuss, right? You can't buy it in a store. It's Jesus. And I just, I wanted to create a moment, not just for myself, but for other people to stop and remember why Christmas is important and who we're celebrating. So like I said, that song is out in all the places. So for example, it's out on Spotify and Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, Pandora, all of the things. I also have a YouTube channel. So that is Kathy Cheetah Music is the easiest way to find it. There's a lyric video on there. There's an audio you can listen to. I have a whole bunch of other stuff on my YouTube channel that is not anywhere else. 
Um, on Instagram, it's Kathy Cheetah Music. Facebook is Author Kathy Cheetah. It's Author Kathy Cheetah because I actually wrote a children's book a couple years ago. So yeah, you can still buy it on Amazon. So I have a website, kathycheetah.com. And I do have that if you subscribe to my emails, you will actually get a free song that is not anywhere. It's not even on YouTube. So little special thing for all of you. It's called More Than Me. And it's just me and my piano. It's a little jazzy and I think you guys will love it. So I would love to connect with all of you. Um, send me an email. Let me know how much this encouraged you. I mean, because that encourages us. You know, that encourages Dr. Pamela and I to keep doing what we do, right? To hear how much this encourages all of you. And go listen. The God Who Never Leaves is also on all of those channels. I do have plans next year to release more. So that was my final question. What's next? Okay. So yeah. So I'm, I I have a couple songs in kind of the back, my back pocket right now. I'm not sure when they're going to come out yet, but when I wrote this um, past few months with a couple other friends of mine, Zach and David, we wrote a song called Jesus Gets It. And it's all about how Jesus, Jesus gets all the stuff that you're going through. I mean, just think about all the stuff he went through, right? He was betrayed by more than one person. Yeah. He was rejected by, I don't know how many people, right? Just, I mean, think about his life. And at the same time, but he also understands hard things, like really hard things. We forget he walked around with Judas for three years and his friend committed suicide. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing, right? Jesus gets your biggest problems. So that's one that I'm planning on releasing next year. Not sure when wow. I'll probably throw in some of the worship stuff that my original worship stuff that I, I like to do at morning prayer. Some of those will probably come out next year too. So the best way to just find out when all that stuff is coming out is follow me on socials and definitely my email. Cause through my email, I'll send you the links. I'll send you the easiest way to find stuff rather than you trying to hunt social media to find all of the whatever it's easiest in the email to just, oh, there it is. And you just click it. So yeah. Very good. Very good. All of that is in the description, y'all. So there's no reason to not follow up with Kathy. Kathy, this has been amazing. And I just want to just highlight what you said about Christmas. You know, Christmas is a beautiful time of year. And yes, it can be a very difficult time of year for people. So I love how you pointed us back to the reason for the season, as they say, to Jesus. So wherever you are at right now, whatever you're dealing with, you can pull close to him. And maybe that's what you do. And you don't get hung up on the other things, whether you feel alone, whether you have, are dealing with loss. I, so many things that you could be navigating through in your terrain of life. But there's one thing that remains the same, and that is the Lord the Lord Jesus, and he'll never leave you and never forsake you. He's the reason for the season. He's it. He's that. He's it supersized, as my kids say. So, you know, draw close to him. And that is always what we can celebrate. Maybe this year it's time to make a Jesus birthday cake. Maybe that's something you need to do yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, go find that song and listen to it and download it and make sure it's on your, you know, constant playlist to remind you um, who you are and whose you are yes. and to keep you from falling into an area, a mindset, as Kathy talked about, that is not going to serve you, serve you um, during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a, this is a time for you to make a change. And that's what I just want to encourage you. I always say we're not breaking down, we're breaking through. And so it's time to break through. Remember, you are here on purpose with a purpose by design, not by default. So go out there and be the salt and the light everywhere you go. Thank you so much, Kathy, for being here with all of this wonderful music. Uh, we're going to have you come back in 2024, if you will, and you can talk about what's next because it'll be now. <laughs> so you can come back if you would. We'd love to have you. That would be wonderful. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us for Purpose by Design with Dr. Pamela Hinkle. You can learn more about Dr. Pamela and her world at PurposeWithPamela.com. See you next time on Purpose by Design.